Wilman Education. Welcome dear learners. Today I am going to teach you the simple machines which is part of physics for secondary schools. Machines make our work easier. Tools and objects that help us to perform the same amount of work with much less effort than if we do the work manually are called machines. Because in our everyday life we have to do lot of work. So machines are important. Tools such as spoons, knives, hammers are called the simple machines. The functioning Let of us see machines. how a machine utilizes the force applied on it changing in different ways to make our work easier. Force. Number one, changing the magnitude of applied force. It is very difficult to open the sealed metal cap of a cold drink this bottle type with our bare hands. However, a bottle of force multiplies machines. the applied force or the effort changing applied on it and hence much less effort is required to open the cap. Applied force. Such type of machines are called the force multiplier machines. Now changing the direction of the applied force. The, hand, the machines which from where we draw the water, underground water. So that is also direction change that way. So it helps. Now mechanical advantage of a machine, the factor by which a machine multiplies the force applied is called mechanical advantage. The force applied on the machine to do some work is called effort. The force applied by the machine on the object is called the load. Factors by which a machine multiplies the force applied is called mechanical advantage. So mechanical advantage MA equals to load by effort. The mechanical advantage of a machine is the ratio of the load to the effort. Applied force on the machine to do some work is called effort. The force applied by machine on the object is called load. So we come to know the mechanical advantage, we come to know about the effort, we come to know about the load. So mechanical advantage MA equals to load by effort that is already told. So let us see in what way mechanical advantage helps us. So greater the mechanical advantage of a machine, smaller is the effort required to lift the given load. <coughs> if effort is less than load, then mechanical advantage is more than one. If effort is more than load, then mechanical advantage is less than one. If effort equals to load, <coughs> then mechanical advantage equals to one. Efficiency of a machine. Efficiency of a machine depends on the work done by the machine and the work done on the machine. So, when you want to find out the efficiency, we calculate output energy and the divided by input energy. So work done by the machine divided by work done on the machine. So efficiency percentage output energy by input energy into 100 that is the percentage 100. Then we can easily calculate the efficiency of a machine in percentage then the types of simple machines. Simple machines can be classified into the six main types, the lever, number one, number two, inclined plane, number three, wedge, number four, screw, number five, pulley, number six, wheel and axle. So altogether there are six simple machines we are coming to know over here. Number one, lever. Lever is the simplest of all types of machines. A lever is a rigid bar that can rotate freely on freely about a point. The fixed point about which the lever can rotate is called fulcrum. 
and the object to be lifted or moved with the help of the lever is called load and therefore and the force applied on the lever is called the effort. The product of the load and the load arm is always equal to the product of the effort and the effort arm. Principle of a lever. Here we will come to know about the load into load arm equals to effort into effort arm. Again load divided by effort equals to effort arm divided by load arm. So, this is the principle of a lever that states the product of the load and the load arm is always equal to the product of the effort and the effort arm. So, on the basis of the relative positions of load, effort and fulcrum, lever is classified as first class lever, second class lever and third class lever. Sometimes we call it class 1 lever, class 2 lever, class 3 lever. So, now we are coming to know what is lever number 1. Basic parts of a lever over here you can see fulcrum is in between and here load and effort on the two ends. So, first class lever actually though th there is a the part. So, first class lever the class 1 lever in this lever the fulcrum located between the load and the effort. Here is a diagrammatic presentation through which you can keep in mind that first class lever pliers, see saw, beam balance, crowbar, pairs of scissors are all examples of first class lever or the class 1 lever. So, here is the beautiful drawing um, a picture of a pliers load in one end, effort is another end, fulcrum is in between. So, that is why it is called first class lever. Remember that the first class lever always takes the fulcrum in between. Then here is second class lever, fulcrum is in one end, load is in the middle and effort is another end. In this type of lever, the load lies between the effort and the fulcrum. Examples of second class lever are nutcrackers, bottle openers, paper, third class lever or the class 3 levers. Here you will come to know about the class 3 lever. Fulcrum is one end, load is another end and effort is in between. So, human forearm is also the best example of it. So, here in this lever the effort lies between the load and the fulcrum. Here the diagrammatical presentation of fulcrum, effort and load. Examples are human forearms, fishing rod, tongs, forceps and the fat tongs. These are the examples. Now we come to know about inclined plane. Inclined planes are very important though it is a wooden plank. You can see over here this diagram shows very clearly that how a heavy object is being lifted. Uh, on the on a height certain height maybe it is a uh, mini truck or or van whatever so that is the thing so formation of inclined plane you can see a wooden plank and one is a, a quite high uh, block how we are just turning it into inclined plane how we form it so this is the way we form inclined plane so then easily we can with a less effort we can easily lift the object. Now, we are coming to know about the wedge. wedge. So, here wedge is a very uh, simple principles of wedge. Wedge is a double inclined plane such that the two sloping surface taper to form a sharp edge. The sharp edge is used to cut, slice or push things apart. A knife, an axle, a chisel are some examples of wedges which are used commonly. Here you can see the chisel and the axe. This is the example of the wedge. Now you see the screw. Screw is also a very 
good example of the simple machines. A screw is a cylindrical rod marked with a winding spiral edge called thread. A screw looks like a nail with grooves cut spirally into it. A screw is actually an inclined plane wound around a rod. Here is the drawing of the screw. You can see the picture of the screw. Threads are shown over here. The tip of the screw is narrow, sharp and pointed. The head has a narrow slit which is used to turn the screw using a screwdriver. As the screw is forced and rotated into a piece of wood, it travels a longer distance than nail wood. Less effort is needed to drive a screw into a block of wood than to drive a nail. Also because it is its thread, the screw grips the wood more firmly than a nail. Now we are coming to know about the pulley. So there are two types of pulley. One is a single pulley, another is a uh, a single fixed pulley and and uh, single movable pulley remember pulley is a pulley is a wheel or a circular disc that can rotate freely about a fixed point so here is the picture of single fixed pulley there are different parts you can see these are all visible so you must learn them and draw them because sometimes in the exam uh, the drawing of the pulley single as fixed pulley comes with the different levelings. This is the single movable pulley. You can see it is used mainly in the factories where the heavy, heavy objects are being being lifted. So in a single movable pulley the axis of the rotation is not fixed. Now we are talking about the wheel and the axle. The wheel and the axle, a wheel and axle arrangement consists of a wheel attached to a rod called axle such that when the wheel is made to rotate, the axle also rotates. These are the different parts of the wheel and axle. Some of the examples of wheel and axles we are showing in our everyday life we come across. So it is better to know about them, a steering wheel, a spindle tap. Machines should be kept in a clean environment which is free from dust and moisture. When not in use, machines should be kept covered to prevent the collection of dust on them. Machines made of iron should be protected from rust by coating them with paint. The moving part of the machine should be regularly oiled with a good quality of machine oil to reduce the friction and the wear and tear. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe this channel for more information and educational videos. Till then, goodbye, see you again. Thank you very much.